Which components are appropriate to fund through reserves? Should the parking lot be in there? What about the landscaping? Not so clear, is it? Well, what if I told you there's a three-part test that identifies which projects should and should not appear in your reserve plan? Your job just got a whole lot easier. To see this test in action, let's go on a virtual tour of a few associations. I'll show you examples of applying this test to various possible reserve projects. And by the end, you'll learn which types of projects should appear in your reserve study and which of those are most important. Having all the appropriate projects appear in your component list helps you minimize unwanted surprises and the much dreaded special assessment. Now it's time to spend a few minutes addressing reserve component selection so you can plan ahead to offset deterioration, constantly repairing or replacing all those things that are destined to wear out. Now, to introduce this section, here's a typical list of, or a, a, a graph showing a typical set of reserve expenses through the years. They are defined by the reserve component list. And this is like a fingerprint. Every property's reserve expense map is going to be a little different. Reserve expenses are typically thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars scattered out over the years in an irregular pattern. And by their size, they make the monthly operating expenses look small. Now, you're the decision maker for the association. You create the future with all the decisions you make, whether the big decisions at budget time or in all the smaller spending decisions you make throughout the course of the year. Having an accurate reserve component list gives you and your association an advantage over the other associations who don't plan ahead. So we try to set you up for success with training sessions like this so you'll know what components you're facing and make sure you have all the right components listed in your reserve study. And this webinar is part of our annual reserve study curriculum. We presented reserve study basics just a couple of weeks ago, where we gave a big picture summary of what reserves are and how it's used. And that's available on our website and on YouTube. Here in Reserve Studies 101, we focus on the reserve component list. And later this year, we'll have Reserve Studies 102, where we introduce the whole concept of the financial side of reserve studies. And finally, we'll present Reserve Studies 103, where we'll spend the entire session on the funding plan itself, the pros and cons of different strategies, and some helpful hints on how you can communicate most effectively to the homeowners about the plan to prepare for all these ongoing expenses. Now, today's program and our entire webinar curriculum is based on National Reserve Study Standards, first published back in 1998. And the most recent update was last year, and those changes after the tragic Champlain Towers South collapse in 2021, make a reserve study an even more powerful tool to improve the future of your association. And this is where it all starts with respect to components. The 2023 revised three-part test that defines which projects are appropriate for funding through reserves. And here it is. To be funded through reserves, a project needs to pass all three elements of this three-part test. It's the association's common area of maintenance obligation. It needs to be reasonably anticipated, meaning you can see it coming so you can budget for it. And it needs to be a cost that is significant in size to the association, meaning not easily absorbed in the ongoing operating budget. And that's often in the range, that threshold is often in the range of half a percent to 1% of an association's annual budget or the border manager's signature authority. The project doesn't pass all three elements of this three-part test. It shouldn't be funded through reserves. Now, there's no industry master checklist or any list proprietary to any reserve study company. If you're trying to follow a checklist, you're always going to miss something. That's why we're using the three-part test. And that three-part test effectively helps you find the right projects that should be funded through reserves at your association, all types of associations like the nice new townhomes shown here, high-rise associations, older associations, and exotic or resort associations. Now, you're going to see deterioration most obviously of properties where they haven't been fighting it. So make sure all the right projects are on your reserve component list 
all the ones that meet the three-part test. And let's plan for them. Now, let's uh, practice that as I take you on an imaginary walk around a few associations applying that three-part test. So here we go. To the side of some of the buildings, the governing documents here say the air conditioning condensers are private property, responsibility of the individual owners, so they fail test number one and shouldn't appear in the reserve component list. And we go in the on-site manager's office and they have equipment there that is owned by the management company, not the association. And you're looking at this picture and you're saying, Robert, that's an old picture. And I said, no, I took this picture last month. The management company needs to do a better job of providing a new desk, a new chair, <laughs> and probably a newer computer for this manager. But this is all on the management company. We shouldn't be funding these assets through reserves. And this association has a concrete underground parking garage. Now it's protected by building waterproofing, so we can't reasonably anticipate the eventual need for major reconstruction. And since we can't reasonably, and there's that important word, anticipate a time the building and its underground garage will need reconstruction, it fails test number two and shouldn't appear in the reserve component list. Now, in that same garage floor, there is a sump pump, and this is a common area association maintenance responsibility that pumps water up from a catch pit at the low point in the garage up to the street level drains. Nobody that I met during my inspection had ever heard it run, but the garage had never flooded, so it must be working. The building engineer said it's never been replaced in the 10 years that he's been working there, and knowing a pump like this usually has a useful life of about 10 to 15 years, we set the useful life at 15 years, and because it's old, and the association should be ready to replace it any day now, next time it rains, perhaps, we need to set the remaining useful life at zero. The point here is you need to start getting comfortable with making some estimates. We are going to have some uncertainties when predicting the future and setting the association up now to pay for that ongoing deterioration. Okay, let's pop up to the roof. On their flat roof is a small hallway ventilator fan. This is for, in this case, second floor hallway. While you can see some rust on the housing, obviously it's facing the elements, getting old. Inside is a pretty simple motor, fan, and a belt. Now, the on-site maintenance staff fixes this ventilator as needed as a minor operational expense, so it fails test number three and shouldn't appear in the reserve component list. All right, now that you've seen how the three-part test works on a few easy components, let's take it up a notch and show you how it works in tougher situations, like this one. Here's a photo looking at the ceiling of another underground garage. This association, as you can see, has put some sheet metal gutters under the areas of piping in the ceiling that are leaking on the cars, protecting the cars. Is plumbing, let's do the three-part test, is plumbing in this condo association a common area maintenance responsibility? Yes. Does this project, garage plumbing, have a reasonably predictable, useful life? And I would say, obviously, yes. It's clearly deteriorated and it is failing, so it has spent its useful life. And do you expect a repiping project like this to be above a minimum significant cost? Absolutely. So repiping the garage area is clearly an appropriate reserve project. And here's another one picture of a hillside that just experienced a slope failure. It may look like not a big deal, just throw some dirt back on the hill, but they got a $50,000 estimate to regrade a slope and replant it. So, is this reasonably predictable? Well, nobody knew this particular hillside was going to fail, but this large association has extensive hills, and at 20 years old, this is now the fourth time a hill somewhere or other in the association has slipped. So the simple math is that, the, that a hillside here slips on average about once every five years. They may not know exactly where, but association history suggests that if it happened before, it will reasonably happen again. And we can really reasonably expect it to happen about every five years. So let your own history help you prepare for your future. Or what about this? 
client who wanted to install a pickleball court in a small space between their clubhouse on the right and the edge of their property. You can see the ironwork fence on the left. Is this a reserve project? Well, no, because it failed test number one because it wasn't yet an association maintenance responsibility. It was still someone's idea. It was just a plan. So that makes it a capital improvement. And you shouldn't be spending reserves designated for deterioration, ongoing deterioration. Spent, you shouldn't be spending it creating new assets. Okay, now you know which projects appear on the reserve component list and which projects are filtered out. Filtered out projects are the uncertain or indeterminate ones, projects that last the life of the building, small cost projects, and they're all filtered out. And note that this will also filter out capital improvements because in the planning stage, they don't yet exist. Now, applying this test means that for the average association, they'll end up having a reserve component list pretty reasonable, 35 to 50 components. But of course, for some larger or more complex associations, that can easily grow to be hundreds of components. All right, so what information should you see for a component? Well, first, you need to describe the project accurately. And remember, it's a project, not a thing. And for each project, expect to have accurate identifying information. Third floor, second floor, lobby. It may mean quantity like a serial number, square yards, square feet, could be a size like the BTU rating of a, a water or pool heater or the maybe the horsepower of a pump. And of course, we expect to see useful life then in years, remaining useful life in years, and the current replacement cost. Now remember, we're going to inflate these costs in the financial analysis portion of the reserve study as we look out to future years. But here in the component list, all we show is current cost. It gives us a foundation for what are things expected to cost now. Now let's look at this simplified reserve component list. I've taken the quantity field out just for space consideration. Every component should show a clear description of the project, like here for asphalt, you can see it's one thing, it's asphalt, but two different projects, ceiling on a five-year and resurfacing on a 20-year cycle, and remaining life, abbreviated RUL, and the project's current replacement cost. And that useful life tells you how often the project occurs, and the remaining useful life tells you when it's next going to occur, like the pool furniture here needing to be replaced this year because it's worn and time to be replaced. The cost is the all-inclusive total cost of performing the project, so it should include shipping, permits, installation, disposal, things like that. And note that a reserve component list for a small association is going to look different than a reserve component list for a large association. For instance, a $4,600 full furniture project may be significant to a small association, but it may be too small. It may be just an operating expense for a large association. It depends where your threshold is of significance. So this is your plan for the property's future. Projects get a little fuzzier, and those projections get a little fuzzier the further you go out into the future. But major projects like roofing, siding, or elevator modernizations are significant, and they're predictable. So it's wise to prepare for these expensive projects with as many years as possible, even if it's more than 20 or 30 years. So we make those estimates, and no worries, you're going to have plenty of reserve study updates in the coming years to refine all those estimates as they gradually draw closer and closer. Now, I have every expectation that in reality, as the years goes by, these expenses are going to move around a little bit and get slightly larger or smaller. Maybe they're going to draw closer or maybe they're going to get pushed out a year or two. They're predictable, but they're still estimates. But you've got your best chance to be prepared if you have a plan. Remember that Benjamin Franklin slide, like this map of projects. If you have a plan and you update the plan regularly. Okay, now the question is how these components affect reserve funding. It's a little bit of a, a view into the future of funding for these projects. 
Now, while you may have a long component list, not all the components have the same effect. Typically, most of your reserve funding is driven by just a few of your components. So of all the components in a typical reserve study, take a moment and think, how many actually dominate the size of your reserve funding needs? Think about it. The answer is usually five or less. It's a wonderfully small number. And often the number is just two or three components that drive reserve funding. Your association type and region of the country are going to affect your component list makeup and which ones for you are the big and influential ones. But for typical townhome associations all across the country, the dominant components are roofing, painting, and asphalt. In cooler or moist climates, you can add siding and either window or deck or both um, type projects. In mid or high-rise condos, you typically don't have as much asphalt or roofing, but you do have major interior hallway projects and major mechanical components such as HVAC systems, boilers, elevator, fire alarm systems, things like that. Now in HOAs and planned developments, it's usually the roadway system and the recreational components that are the most significant. Maybe the docks, maybe the eight tennis courts, things like that. And here's a pro tip to learn how to be able to identify the influential ones from the others. And the secret is don't just look for the largest cost. What really matters is the cost per year. It may be found in your reserve study as a cost per year or sometimes called a deterioration rate. For instance, let's say we have two projects, one that's $100,000, one that's $50,000. Clearly, $100,000 is twice as expensive as $50,000. But if that $100,000 project only occurs every 20 years, then that means that you're funding $5,000 a year of deterioration. You're offsetting $5,000 a year of deterioration. But if that painting project is something you need to do every five years, it's deteriorating at the rate of $10,000 per year, twice as significant. So keep that in mind. Now, I mentioned a time or two that we're in the business of estimating here, of projecting the future based on what we know today. And that's the key. As time goes by, we can refine our estimates. Most of you probably know that there are three reserve study levels of service. Most associations only need to do a full reserve study, a top level of service, only once. And that's when you measure all the assets, count them, identify the reserve component list. But best practice now is to do a with site visit update at least every third year and to help you catch the changes in between years, maybe like inflation or projects that don't occur exactly as planned, there's the inexpensive no site visit updates that you can do in those in between years. That helps you stay on top of your reserve planning. But component selection, the choice of which components is going to help you plan ahead for a safe and successful future. And it all boils down to that three part test. And that should provide you with a stable component list from year to year. Now, in addition to help you select the components, it helps you know which expenses to not include for reserve funding, like insurance deductibles. And the reason why is that they don't occur on a predictable basis. They fail test number two. And that's why you need some operating budget available for those unforeseen events. And there should be no confusion about conflicts with IRS standards. You prepare your taxes according to IRS standards, and you prepare your reserves according to National Reserve Study Standards. And that means that you're free to fund for non-capital projects for IRS definitions, like a roof inspection, tree trimming, painting, or other projects. And with no maximum useful life limit, you can and should fund some reasonably predictable long-life projects like uh, seawalls or boat ramps. And if your buildings were built at different times, clearly are free to have different components for the different ages and timing of those various phases. Or you can have reserve components for partial replacements of huge systems like sidewalks, grinding a certain percentage every year, or maybe replacing a certain percentage of your perimeter fencing every year. You can also have a reserve component for building structural inspections or other expensive inspections or every few year tests. 
or maybe just schedule significant maintenance like the thousands of dollars you'd spend maintaining a chiller in its midlife rehab project. All this so you have the funds to help your most expensive components reach a nice long life. And it's all done so you can see and prepare for the future, minimizing expensive surprises at your association. You want to be able to plan for these things. At Association Reserves, we make the present less stressful and the future more secure. If you want to join us in this mission, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment down below on what you'd like to see us address in a future video. Let's plan for your best future.